Howdy folks, Dave here with another quick model making tip from Thunder Mesa Studio. Now if you have ever uh, wanted to add lighting to the interior of your structures but weren't uh, exactly sure quite where to start, congratulations you found your way to the right video. Um, if you've watched some of my other builds and projects, you've probably seen that I love to put lighting inside of, of my structures. I think it adds a whole nother dimension to the layout to have uh, scenes that are lit up and can be uh, seen in sort of a night mode. So uh, with that in mind, I wanna show you um, a quick and relatively easy way to add LED lighting to the interior of structures. Now I'll be working on an O scale structure here, but this all everything I'm telling you also applies to uh, N scale and HO scale and whatever other scale you happen to be working in. But first a disclaimer, I make no claims to being an electronics whiz. <laughs> None at all. Uh, in fact, I know just enough to be dangerous. And that's why I have found relatively quick and easy ways to do things. So uh, what I'm going to share with you today is the way that I like to do it, or one of the ways that I like to do it. So let's get started, shall we? Now down here on the workbench today, I have a little structure, a little SA office from the town of Calico that I want to add interior lighting to. Um, now in this particular case, I didn't plan to add interior lights to this structure from the beginning. Usually I do that, it's, I, I, and that's what I recommend. Uh, planning from the very beginning when you're building the structure of how the lights are gonna go in, how the wiring is gonna be run through the structure and things like that. So what we're doing today is I'm actually retrofitting this structure with lights. And uh, the reason, by the way, I didn't plan to put them in the first place is because this was a, uh, a sample build uh, uh, for a possible kit and I didn't originally think I was going to put it on the layout but hey now I've decided to so I want to add some lights to it. I don't have to worry too much about interior detailing showing up because this structure actually sits on the layout kind of like this so you can't you won't be able to see uh, the interior but you will be able to see lighting coming through these uh, these big uh, front windows. The first thing I had to do was create access uh, to the interior of the building. So I actually went in and cut away a uh, two inch square piece of the floor. When it was originally built, this was a solid piece because like I said, I hadn't made plans uh, to put lights in there. But so I, I, I cut that away and uh, sanded that up, cleaned that up, edges up a little bit. And now I'll be able to uh, create a, a, a lighting module that will go inside of here. And, you know, those of you who have added lighting to structures might be asking, well, why didn't you just cut a little hole and run the lights up through there? Well, there's a reason for that, and I'll, uh, I'll show it to you a little bit later in the video. But first, I want to talk a little bit about LEDs. Um, Light-emitting diodes, of course, have been a boon to uh, modelers and makers of all kinds uh, since they were first invented. Um, they last virtually forever, for many, many years, uh, much, much longer than the old incandescent grain of wheat bulbs we used to have to use uh, back in the olden times, back in the old days before most of you whippersnappers were born. But anyway, uh, they come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. This is a five millimeter LED right here. And uh, they have uh, two diodes that come out. There's a long one and a short one. And on uh, LEDs, the longer one is usually, well, it's supposed to always be positive, but you should check because um, when wiring an LED for use on a system, uh, like on a model railroad layout where you have a nine or 12 volt, volt system uh, for running the lights, uh, you're going to need to add resistors uh, to the positive lead of the LEDs like that. You're going to need to uh, solder on a resistor. For these, I use a 510 ohm resistor, 
and that uh, steps the uh, the uh, voltage down enough that you can run these things without fear of burning them out. If if you didn't do that and you just hook this straight up to a nine volt power source you would burn this thing out. That's way too much power for one of those. The good news is, since this is we're talking about the easy way to do it, you can now buy batches of small LEDs. This is a three millimeter LED with the wiring and the resistor already soldered on. And you can find these on eBay and Amazon and places like that. They come in packages, usually 10 or 12 like this. And you can buy them in a multitude of colors. Uh, you can get ones that uh, flicker, like a, like a candle. Let me show you here. Now these flicker already without any kind of special wiring needed. They're just ready to go right out of the package. And that's what makes this kind of lighting setup so quick and easy. Oh, let me show you another thing. Um, LEDs are polarity specific. That means uh, the positive power lead needs to be hooked up to uh, a positive power source and the negative to the negative. So here we go. Let me, uh, let me just demonstrate that real quick. Um, I'm going to put the positive on the negative side and the and vice versa. And you can see, uh, no joy. Doesn't light up. But if we swap that, with the positive on the positive and the negative on the negative, we've got lights. So that's why you want to keep track of which is which, even for a simple wiring job like this. And I always, uh, just for the sake of simplicity, I try to keep uh, the positive as a red lead and the negative as black. Now the effect I want to create um, coming through the windows from the interior of this building is of an old time uh, kerosene lamp, uh, like a flickering kerosene lamp. So I am going to use one of the flickering LEDs, but I'm also going to um, gang it up with a non-flickering yellow LED. So these are both yellow, but one will flicker and the other will not. And that gives a more realistic appearance to the light, I have found. So the first thing I need to do is wire these two LEDs together in parallel. So I'm going to wire this red lead to this red lead and this black lead to that black lead and then have uh, have them join together with new leads going off the bottom. Cut this off right about there. It's right about here. I want to expose the wire by cutting the insulation away. This is braided wire in these LEDs. Wiring like this, uh, this small gauge wire comes in two flavors. It's either braided or solid. I actually prefer solid most of the time. Now I'm just going to twist these together so I can test this out to make sure they both light up properly. I always keep a 9 volt battery uh, handy for this kind of testing. Uh, these LEDs are rated for 9 to 12 volts. So a 9 volt battery should work to light them up, just like that. Okay, we're good to go. So now I need some wire to attach to there. And this is some 28 gauge uh, solid core wire that I like to use for these kind of hookups. Quick and dirty soldering trick I figured out. This is actually just a piece of masonite here, and no, it's not fireproof. Um, <laughs> but we're not going to have the heat on there long enough for it to catch on fire. I've had people be concerned that this is going to burst into flame. That's not going to happen. And taping it down like this keeps the wires from moving around while I'm soldering them. It's just a quick and easy way to do that. What's coming out? This is a, uh, a no clean flux. Something you might want to look for. Uh, it helps the solder flow especially in a braided wire. It helps it get in there and make a good connection. And it, um, it won't corrode. The, the joints won't corrode. There's, a, there's no acid in there. When using one of these old soldering guns like this, it's always really important to make sure this tip is kept very clean. Um, you'd be amazed how quickly it'll stop generating a lot of heat once it gets dirty. So I've just tinned the end here with a little bit of this uh, lead-free solder. 
we go. I'd like to give myself a couple of feet of lead because uh, I know how far it is uh, on the layout and the place I'm going to put this uh, to reach from the spot where the model is going to the, the power source. And I'll be talking about power sources here too in a minute. Now I want to protect these uh, joints and uh, prevent uh, any kind of short circuits from the positive and negative touching. So we've got a little bit of heat shrink tubing. I'm just going to uh, cut off a couple of pieces that will be long enough for my needs. You can also use, uh, you know, good old uh, black electrical tape for this, but I prefer heat shrink. Now this tool, this is a heat gun. Um, they come in a lot of different configurations too, and uh, this is a nice one for small electronics like this. If you do a lot of wiring like I do, it's a really handy thing to have. You can use it to shrink up this heat shrink tubing. Just like that. And you know, if you don't have one of these or you don't want to invest in one, um, <laughs> a match, <laughs> a small torch, or uh, you know, a big lighter also works. Just be careful, don't uh, burn the place down. Okay. Now those are joined together. Once again, we test. Not bad. Of course, we don't want to just see those big fat bulbs through the window, so we're going to have to do something about that. So I created this little black box out of some foam core to house the lamps. And uh, there's a couple of reasons that I did it this way. Um, one is um, this is pretty thin basswood. This is a sixteenth of an inch thick thick basswood, and I don't want the light to shine through the walls. It's a single ply walls. Most of my structures are double ply, uh, so I don't have this problem. But in this case, it's a single ply, sixteenth of an inch thick basswood wall, and LEDs can be kind of bright, and they can shine right through those walls if you don't take proper preparations. So I built this little black uh, foam core box to house my LEDs and this is a piece of um, scotch foam double stick tape, that foam tape that uh, holds the LEDs into position. Now the other thing that this little black box does is it helps hide the fact that there's not a detailed interior on the building um, for those who are curious enough to look in through the windows. And also, uh, this will be permanently affixed to the layout. This, the wires will go down through the scenery uh, to the, uh, the lighting wiring bus, the 9-volt bus. And this will actually be cemented onto the scenery. And this will create a very positive grab for the structure. The structure will fit right down over the top of this, like a lampshade. So now I need to uh, put a hole in the scenery and we'll run these wires down through there. But before we do that, real quick, I wanted to show you uh, one more thing I added. Uh, I put some blinds in the front of the structure to further hide the fact that there's no detailed interior, even though it's going to be sitting at an angle like this where you can't really look in from the front. Um, these are just made out of some manila file folder paper uh, colored with a green Sharpie. That's another reason to put that big hole in the bottom so I could reach my fingers in there to install that particular detail. So I've drilled all the way down through three layers of foam and down through the uh, half inch thick sub road bed to uh, access the underneath of the layout, the underside. I'm running wires down through these layers of foam and down through the bottom of the layout can be quite kind of a pain, frankly. It can be hard to do. Uh, so here's, I'll show you a little trick I figured out. Um, I just uh, tape the wires, the ends of the wires, to a bamboo skewer, and then just poke it straight down there through that. And then I can grab that skewer from the other end and pull the wires through. Go. To hold this in place, I'm going to use some uh, of this uh, heavy-duty mounting tape. There should be plenty of grab. Okay. 
to ensure this is exactly where I want it, I'm going to wait to pull the, uh, the other backing off here. I'm just going to get it started a little bit until the structure is right where I want it. Put this inside first, like that. See how it fits right in there? Pull this backing off. And that way, I don't have to guess about where everything is going to end up. Now, if I need to, if I need to move the layout or want to do more details here or whatever, I can just lift this right off of here and the lighting unit stays in place. Now, I want to show you down here underneath this section of layout, this is uh, the DC wiring bus uh, for, the, uh, for the lighting in this section, in the calico section here. And it's basically just a power strip that I have hooked up to a wall wart like this. This is a 9 volt DC transformer. If you ever want to know, just look on the back of these and it has the information right there. 9 volts. So it, uh, it will transform uh, regular house current 120 volts, volts AC to 9 volts DC, which is safe for all this lighting. So now I got the wire stripped off the end here. Just a little bit more. So these are also color coded black and red. Make my life easier. And yours too, should you just choose to do it this way. Black for negative, red for positive. Okay, now the moment of truth. If I did everything right, when I flip this toggle switch down here on the fascia, all the lights should come on for this section of layout, including the ones we just added. Let's see if it works. Success! I love it when a plan comes together. Let's see how it looks uh, with the overhead lights off. And that is my relatively quick and easy method for adding LED lighting to the interior of model structures. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little model making quick tip and don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you want to see more. You can also follow uh, Thunder Mesa over on Instagram at thunder.mesa or find out more at the uh, Thunder Mesa website. That's thundermesa.studio. Or you could do what these nice folks did and uh, help support us on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash thundermesa. That's going to do it for this one, folks. Thanks for tuning in. As always, keep moving forward and adios for now.